So I'm proud to be here to uh, hopefully share some of my story and uh, maybe uh, get some more money for these types of programs. So as a military person, I think a lot of us uh, combat vets, it's kind of the word that I would use is just kind of broken. That when we come back, we don't really integrate very well. We don't really do a very good job. In 2008, we were, I was on a real small base, Northern Waziristan, uh, Afghanistan, and we were getting hit by mortar attacks, and I was on two, three missions a night. And uh, in uh, June of 08, I got hit and uh, took the stuff out, you know, frags and patched me up, and I stayed for another month. And then uh, finally they just told me I needed to go home. So uh, I didn't want to leave because the mission was still going on there. My guys were still there. My buddies were still there. It's kind of a weird thing that none of us really want to leave because it's our, it's our family. It's kind of how it becomes. So I was flying back on the airplane. I was getting out. I was boarding the aircraft, going past a couple of our vehicles that were kind of half blown up and kind of messed up because they still had gear on them that we couldn't leave behind. So we needed to bring them back to the States. Walking past these blown up vehicles, kind of mangled, and then walked into about 19 coffins. They were uh, flag draped coffins just sitting there on an airplane. And so I had to sit there right next to these coffins. So I asked the doc for a few Ambien, they gave me a few Ambien, and I kind of zonked out, kind of sitting in the seat, waking up a couple hours later, and this is a long flight. So waking up a couple hours later, my knees were still, you know, bumping into the flag in front of me. And I looked around and just, I needed to lay down. I had to, I had to sleep. And the only spot for me was kind of laying in between those, those flags. And uh, talk about waking up to some pretty bad ambient dreams. So I was waking up to, to flags and I was waking up to this, that, that kind of, it was just a really weird flight. But this is the way we come home. We come home messed up. We come home in really bad ways. And then suddenly we're thrust into a day later, I'm walking down Main Street. I don't see a person here in the States that understands what we go through. I don't see a person here in the States that even knows we're in combat or doing anything. So I'm sitting there in these weird dreams, waking up with all these flags, and I'm, I'm broken, I'm hurt, all my friends are dead around me. And everybody's walking around here in a day is just doing their daily chores and drinking their beers and partying on the weekends. This is how we feel when we come back. That's the feeling. It's pretty messed up. And so what do we do? We go to the VA. And what does the VA do? They give me a bunch of drugs. They give me a bunch of downers and painkillers and everything else. And what does that do? It just puts me into a stupor. And that's what they want, I guess. I don't know. It's easier to control us. It's easier to take care of us. I don't, I don't get it. The Art for me kind of started opening up some different areas. And this is one of the paintings I did. And the SEAL Team Trident, that's the ego with the trident and everything else on there. And it's the same themes that we just heard earlier. It's just kind of that fragment, it's a broken. And it, this, is un, this was me by myself in my own garage just doing my own thing. So this is not working with a bunch of other people. I've never saw anything like this before. This is just how I felt. And uh, it comes out. And so I stopped taking the painkillers and just started trying to deal with it myself. I stopped taking all the other stuff that they wanted me to take. And this is what I looked like in, in 2008. That's, what, that's how I looked back in those days. And so the memory of those days is still pretty thick in my head. And this is, you know, quite a few years later. This is seven years later. Still remember it. I remember all that stuff. It's still there very, very vividly in my mind. And that broken just kind of crushed. But you started kind of thinking about trying to be better and trying to fix yourself. Because you know you have to be fixed. When you're looking at yourself, you know you're messed up. You want to be better. You want to get better. And so there's, there's very few places you can reach out until recently thanks to some of the programs that are starting to come up now. Non-traditional medicine is just something that is not funded, and so it's hard to find. Non-traditional medicine is not something covered by healthcare plans or the VA or anything else until very, very recently, and it's still only partially covered, and it's only in a couple of spots around the country. And this type of medicine saved my life. 
without me being part of anything. I did it on my own. So I had to grow myself and figure it all out myself because there was nothing else out there. 22 veterans commit suicide per day. 22 veterans a day. Because we have no outlets, we have nobody to look at, we don't have anywhere to go. I sat with two psychologists in their offices and I told them stories. And I think they were getting more of a kick out of the stories than they were helping me. They weren't helping me. I thought they were being more destructive to my therapy than anything. And they still, I still can't stand even seeing those two psychologists. If I saw them right now, I'd rather punch them in the face than speak to them. And that's my honest truth. They did not help me. I think they hurt me worse than anything. This is what helped me right here. This right here is just me just kind of going wild. Sometimes it gets kind of crazy. You just start throwing paint on a paper and just see what happens. And this was more of a brush cleaning incident than anything. And then when I started looking at it, I was going, wow, it looks just like a, you know, a swan or a phoenix or something's going on. I was saying, and so I kind of created something. Sometimes out of chaos, really cool stuff happens. And sometimes we need that chaos. I know I need the chaos sometimes. This one, again, was uh, just one of those happy mistakes where I would take all the paint and I would start painting a scene and just doing a background and I was getting ready to put something on it. But then I was trying to change the texture of the scene. So I took a whole bunch of uh, cellophane and uh, started crushing the cellophane up and putting it on there and I would pull it off and this is what happened. And then I started looking down into the painting and I saw horses and there were soldiers and there were spears and swords. And it's a little harder to see it. So you can see a small shield there. So some of it I kind of highlighted with some pen because it wasn't really showing up enough. So I made a little bit of it more stand out a little bit further. What you can see again is just kind of that chaos where something happens and that kind of might be the inside of your brain. You know, inside of me is so much turmoil and so much chaos, but there's still something there. And it takes a f special vision to be able to see it. And sometimes that special microscope, that, that glasses to see that really cool stuff Who's got those glasses? You know, I want to find that person. Maybe she's sitting right here. So the battlefield is full of uh, wreckage and ghosts. The chaos lives on from crusades of nil, of nothing. So on the back of all my paintings, I try to put like a poem or something or just write something about it. And then there's another one of those ones where I was just doing stuff. And it ended up having like four different birds with these phoenix and these, you know, it's just flight. And uh, these were not, I highlighted what was already there with the black, just doing a little bit of ink on it. But all those were there, they were present inside the painting without me even really trying too much. And so it was kind of talking to me. And so this was like one of my favorite ones because it was all flames and fire and just craziness. But then you have these, you know, all these birds, these phoenixes trying to take off. And every one of those birds was in there just out of the, the nothing. It was just me just doing the same thing, crumpled up cellophane. So it's just amazing when you just put a bunch of color on it there and then stick the cellophane on there and pull it off. It's like a really old uh, 1970s motorcycle guy technique. They used to take two different colors and put them on the motorcycle tanks and then put the cellophane over there and it'll pull out the color from underneath. So it's kind of cool. But uh, sometimes just not trying very hard stuff happens. And then I started kind of digging into this and what was that meaning to me? Not really an artist. So I don't know if you can look at all this and say that, am I an artist, am I not an artist? I don't really think I am. I'm just kind of a creator and I'm just kind of a, one of those wacky people that does stuff and then it just happens. And so when I started trying to do more of the art, this is kind of when I started doing painting and trying to do stuff. Some of the pictures started actually kind of coming out. This is after I kind of had my backgrounds and all that. And uh, the one on the left, it's just the guard post. And I do a lot of these guard posts because I still think I'm kind of stranded and I'm just kind of there alone on that, on that guard post. And then the right-hand one was, uh, I just call that Lady Valor. It's just a shadow figure just kind of standing there on guard, just always there. So that's what my feet look like after a day of painting. I do bare feet and the paint's going all over the place. And I just thought that was kind of a funny way to finish up. <laughs> So I'm not totally done, so thank you. So that's kind of what my, what my painting looks like. But uh, 
the real reason I'm here is because this type of medicine is what can save lives. It's like we do non-traditional, we look at Eastern medicine, we look at art therapy, we look at so many different things that are just not funded. And so we're looking at, we're begging for funds and different groups. I actually started trying to do something called the Healing Grounds when I was down in Florida, and that was about four years ago. And uh, I had a couple of homeless guys living in there, and I had some other folks coming in, and, and I thought I was really starting to help out. But then I started doing speech, speaking, and started doing a lot more things out and about, trying to raise the funds to do other projects and trying to spread that out. And I found that me being out here and just telling my story and being with people was more effective to get more of these bigger uh, organizations funded rather than, than me doing it myself. But the Healing Grounds was the same thing. And it was, a, it was landscaping and gardening. And then there's pottery, and there's building koi ponds, and there's so many things. But if you look at all of these things that are going on that I'm speaking about, all of these helped me. Every one of them, I'm using my hands, putting something together. I'm sweating. I'm taking out of my soul, and I'm just putting it out there, and I'm making something physical. So it's not me on a couch talking. It's not someone on the, the theoretical doctor talking about this stuff. It's me because I heal myself. Heal thyself is what we have to really look at, is me putting on paper and me doing something made me better. And then me also trying to help out other veterans and trying to see people and trying to pass it on as a teacher, again, doing something with my hands and helping somebody else is what was effective. And I think you find that all the veterans, I'm not, I can't say all the veterans, that'd be bad, but I but tell you what, so many veterans and so many of us that have gone through this, have gone through such a physical and wacky thing that nobody should ever experience. War is the most evil and terrible thing that no one should ever experience it. And, and me going to politics is trying to fight war. I don't want to ever have any kid go to war, ever, because I've experienced it. It should not ever happen. So I'm doing everything I can in every way, but I'm doing something with my hands. I'm creating. That's what we need. We don't want doctors on couches. It doesn't work for us. This right here is what works. And I, it saved my life. And I want you to remember that 22 veterans per day are committing suicide. And how do we stop that? I'm doing everything I can to help stop that. And everyone in this room can also do that by working with groups like this and by going out there and, and venturing out and finding something to help, finding something out there. Working with our hands will save our lives. And this has saved my life. Thank you.